Hello, Graham Roberts here. Uh, this demonstration is actually about drawing polygons in Java in BlueJ using the left mouse key and the up arrow button and the space bar for different uh, actions. And I'm not going to explain how the program works so much as show the program working in this particular case. My aim is to uh, make one aware of where the coordinates are, that the coordinates are points in the Windows Toolkit, and that we can create them uh, by clicking on the panel and also save those coordinates to a file. And we can read those file, uh, coordinates from a file and draw the polygons. That, that's the main aim of this. So let's first of all load uh, BlueJ by double clicking on the package. And you can see here I've got two classes um, which are Polygon Drawer and Polygon Drawer Extended. So we look first of all at the whole BlueJ environment. And we have this. And um, what we're going to do is first of all run the polygon drawer and then we run the extended so let's run the drawer first of all and see what we're talking about here this is a slightly bigger panel because we want to show the polygons more clearly i'm going to actually just draw a box so I'll start there with 140, 49, that is, sorry, 148. 148 is the X coordinate and 49 is the Y coordinate. So it's 49 pixels down from the top here, here, and 148 pixels across. That's the first one. And if I click down here at 150 X coordinate from the left and 468 pixels down from the top, then we get a line drawn between these two points. Remember, points are actually in the abstract uh, Windows Toolkit. So we've drawn a line there. If I, if I draw another um, line here to 582472 coordinates, and then I can click up here uh, to 576, that's the X coordinate, and 52 down from the top. So it's slightly lower than this one, which was 49 pixels from the top. And then I can close this off by clicking on this um, little circle. The circle is just something I've drawn to show where we're clicking, as it were, makes it a, bit, a little bit clearer. And now we've got a box that is being drawn. So now we've got a polygon which is <laughs> actually uh, four lines and um, we are not filling these we could fill them but we're not going to do that uh, in this demonstration right so now if I click uh, an up arrow on my keyboard it will allow me to put another box or polygon on the panel but you can also see that to the standard output has been uh, printed the polygon list, that is the list of points that constituted the polygon. The 14849 was the first one, 150468 was the second one, the third one was 582472, and the final one was 57652. OK, so we have um, printed those out on the screen. And the closing um, line, well, we, we won't worry about that. That's, that's, we've got that now. OK, so I can now do another uh, polygon. So I'm going to go there, go there, go there, and go back. And I create... Mm, a triangle and um, 
when I click an up arrow key, we should get the printing out of the second polygon. And well, the first polygon and the second polygon. Basically, it dumps out to the the standard output the contents of the list of points. I, I'll be showing that in the code in a few minutes time. OK, now if I press the I can do another I can do another um, polygon. In fact, this goes on and on forever and ever. Um, providing I press an up, uh, up or down arrow or left or right arrow key. And now we get the three polygons. So it's three polygons in a list now. Polygon one, two and three are in a list of polygons. All right. Now, my point was that if we can draw these polygons and if we can dump those polygons uh, to the standard output, as we've done here, then we should be able to put those to a file, a text file, and then we should be able to load those into a program from a text file and draw the polygons automatically, as it were, from the file. Okay, that was the point. Okay, so let's uh, just press the space bar and we get rid of all of the list. We actually clear it and we can start all over again. All right. And uh, if I press the arrow key, we can see this just goes on and on. Um, I'm going to just close that and clear this. And now um, I'm going to come back to this, run it again, because what I want to do is show that I can just print my initials, as it were. Uh, you have to be kind of careful with this, that you do, <laughs> you do um, click or plot. Literally, you know, it's a plot. You plot it out ahead of times. Otherwise, uh, you do get some obscure drawings. So that's meant to be my initial G. And now I press an arrow key and I click here. Uh, let me see. I click there, there, and there. I'm trying to get the R and now uh, there and there to get gr uh, when i press an arrow key we should get the output to the standard output and there we have it so now we have um the uh, g which was this and now we've got the r which was this so if we put those coordinates that and that into a text file and <laughs> write another program called Polygon Drawer Extended, we should be able to uh, load in my initials. Hmm? That's the idea. Right, uh, so uh, let's, let's try that. Well, let's uh, just get rid of this and that and have a look at the Polygon Drawer extended. All right, so I'm going to click that and load that. And we can see that it's automatically drawn my initials. These are different coordinates than what we just had because these were taken from a text file. And that text file is here. This is the actual text file. Uh, that should correspond with the coordinates. Uh, there we go. I started at 33289 and then I went to 10384, as you can see here. So these coordinates were read and it knew the second initial or the second polygon after there was a, a blank line in the text file. So it ran, read these points, read no points knew it was a new polygon and then took the next polygon. There is no blank line here. It ends, so you can see it because it ends here. All right, so there's no blank line there. Okay, so 
uh, could I actually draw another polygon? Well, yes, because that functionality remains in this extension. But um, the if I go, yeah, the, the standard output um, doesn't actually show me any more because that's in the extension, not there. Right, so the purpose of this was to illustrate the polygon drawing can be sent, uh, the coordinates, the points can be sent to text files and also loaded from text files to show the polygon. And that really illustrates how we can use Java in, and Swing tools to literally draw things on a screen uh, that aren't necessarily shapes. You could actually draw, uh, well, we could draw lines on the screen. We could doodle on a screen. We could sketch on a screen. Now let's look at the code. The polygon drawer is here. And we have the usual suspects as imports. We have to input swing, the toolkit, and events from the toolkit, the array list in order to list items, which are points, and points being objects or classes that are in the toolkit are not explicitly stated here, but they are in, embedded in there. They're, that's where they're, they assume the point class is in the library. And this is an interface list for the generic type of uh, point. It's called a generic. We have a Java doc, um, and I'll just read this out for the sake of it. A program that allows users to draw multiple polygons on a panel using mouse clicks. Each polygon is preserved until the spacebar is pressed to clear the canvas. Arrow keys start a new polygon. Points are marked with small circles and coordinates are displayed next to each point. Our instance variables are the list of points, which is all completed polygons, which we saw actually being dumped and all the contents being dumped and also uh, the contents being loaded from a text file into the list. The uh, current polygon, of course, is also a list of points. And the color we have initially is red, just for uh, to be distinctive. And then uh, when the polygon is finished, it, it is drawn in black. We have the constructor where we set up the list and another list and we add the mouse listener, the key listener, and very, well, essentially, we, we, we must set the focus ball to true, otherwise we won't be capturing any of these events. The graphics uh, is very much part of the swing toolkit. Um, we set the color black before we um, actually, I would say paint, the lines and we make checks to make sure that we when we when we have and we don't have an empty polygon I don't think we need to go into the detail of that but drawing the polygon involves obviously iterations and the iteration is over the list of polygon points as you'd expect um, and uh, here we are drawing small circles at each point to display the coordinates. Uh, you can see that the small circle is the fill oval part there. And the coordinates are drawn out because one of the purposes of this demonstration is to emphasize that the points, the coordinates, are what uh, enables and empowers this kind of canvas activity this drawing activity in Java. The mouse clicks, of course, need to be 
um, the mouse listener methods need to be there because it's an interface and if anything's missing the compiler will definitely complain about that uh, even if they're not actually there's no actual content um, to actually do anything about the event we have to have the event captured uh, potentially for the sake of the interface and here we are uh, picking up a space bar or an arrow key this is a kind of uh, option to see if it's one or t'other of the arrow keys. We could have just picked an up arrow key. I've chosen any of the four so that one doesn't have to really focus on the keyboard too much um, to get the second or third polygon started. And then we start a new polygon if the up arrow key is pressed. If we press the space bar, of course, we need to clear everything all the polygons polygon list needs to be cleared and the current polygon needs to be cleared and we repaint otherwise it won't clear the canvas in order to print the polygon coordinates uh, we need to iterate over the lists that we have and that's what we do here um, and print them out on the standard output and what it actually looks like is is this so this be, um, begets this display when we start a new polygon there are certain things we have to do I don't think I will go into this, this in any real detail it's not my purpose but uh, this is what we would do uh, if if it's not empty and the uh, main method is that we set up the frame and then we add uh, we instantiate a panel then we add the panel the size I set is 800 by 600 just simply so we can see it more clearly and then we make sure we can actually end the program by clicking on the cancel part of the window uh, and we must set visible true otherwise we can't see anything well that was the polygon drawer code all right so now let's look at the drawer extended now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this this is really much more complicated because we're involving file handling and we're we've got uh, the buffered reader file reader IO exception input output exception in case they can't find the file or there's something wrong in the file maybe one of the characters is corrupt uh, maybe a missing parentheses in the text file if you recall the um, the text file has points coordinates with the brackets um, so if that was missing what would happen well we we would pick that up and make sure it was handled um, and here we have the array list and the list interface Uh, this is um, much the same. The, the file handling is as you would expect where things differ. And this is where we load the polygon coordinates from a text file and add them to the polygon list. It handles the IO exceptions, number format exceptions as well during the file processing. And um, each line should be a coordinate pair bracket x comma y close bracket but x and y of course would be integer values and this is how it's read uh, this is kind of standard stuff really for reading a text file and um, I don't think that that's not really the purpose of this demonstration so I'm not going to spend much time on that that's okay let me know in the comments if you want me to go over file handling um, in Java or this particular file handling. And here we have the instantiation. Uh, what's different about this is, of course, that we load 
polygons from file and the text file is called polygon underscore coordinates dot text and we saw that I will show it again because I think it's quite important uh, this is in fact the polygon coordinates dot text file and where is that well it is actually um, here if we look at um, the polygon drawer of folder or package we actually have the file here so this is a text file and if I double click on it it should and it does load it up in notepad I showed you earlier in notepad plus plus because that's the text editor I prefer but this is the windows notepad uh, showing the content of polygon coordinates dot text the readme text here is a summary of what's going on what's the purpose of this um, uh, you can see there the um, user instructions are stated there so I won't read it out you want to you can pause the video and read it yourself I shall be providing this code on my github portal uh, under the quotidian education uh, part so if you want to have a look at the code and play with the code yourselves you're welcome to do so I'll just reiterate what the purpose of this was if I may right so the purpose really was that I wanted to show oh yes by the way you can look at the documentation it's all set up for you if you want to um, I wanted to show that one can use the uh, toolkit and swing to actually make polygons on a J frame or panel of a J frame actually technically I suppose and I've obviously put that in the wrong place as <laughs> this is uh, that was made to be a box and you can see you have to be quite careful uh, what you do in order to you have to literally plot out the coordinates which makes sense really and when I press up arrow we should get the updated coordinate list of what I've just been clicking and finally since we can dump this uh, plotting on the panel to the standard output we could have saved it to a text file and then we could therefore write a procedure to read from the text file and plot the coordinates automatically on the canvas from the file and we did that I'll just close that off and I'll show you with this this will read the file and automatically generate the saved file um, sorry I have to <laughs> the saved file coordinates here this will be translated as it were and plotted on the panel automatically when you run the program hope that's been useful